at you all the way from East Park. It's Elbows Cooking in the Hood Show. What the hell that mean? Oh, that's right, folks. Elbow will be cooking up all his favorite delicious country style, ghetto style meals right before your eyes. And he'll break it down for you, show you how to do it as easy as one, two, three. Fit for one, fit for two, or fit for a whole family. The whole family will love it. Mmm, mmm. You already know. Food from the hood is always good. Elbows cooking in the hood, y'all. Hey, yo, fellas. Elbows cooking in the hood. All y'all say it with your chest. Elbows cooking in the hood. There you go, there you go. Hey, 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 come on in, come on in. Welcome to my hood. I'm Elbow, and this is cooking in the hood. Have you ever, let me ask y'all a question real quick. Have you ever Watch the cooking shows and, and, and when you added up everything that they said to add up and you put it there and you put this there and you sprinkle this there and sprinkle that there and when you finish, the food just wasn't good. I'm gonna tell you why. Cause they wasn't cooking in the hood. Baby, what we gonna do, we gonna cook in the hood, hood style, the way it's supposed to be done, so that when you taste your food, whatever I tell you to do, you gonna say, uh, and everybody else gonna say, uh, okay? So what we gonna do tonight, we gonna do something real simple. It's gonna be quick, you can go home from work, you can make it for your family, your kids will love it, your husband will love it, your wife will love it, everybody will love it. We gonna do some stuffed chicken breast, which is gonna be smothered with a cream of mushroom sauce. Then we're going to do some red russet potatoes. We're going to garlic those, pepper, make it, maybe even throw a little cheese on this, okay? Then we're going to do some green beans, put that together. You got a fabulous meal, and maybe even throw a couple of biscuits in there, okay? All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off with our chicken breast over here. You want to take you some boneless chicken breast. So make sure you clean your chicken. You know, we want to try to be a little healthy with everything. Get some of the fat off the chicken, you know. Get you a nice old knife, you know what I'm saying, you know, and you know, once again in the hood, you know what I'm saying, how it is, your knife might be a little dull, so just do whatever how you gotta do it to get the fat off of it. <laughs> you know how we do. Skin that on off, get the little fat off of it. You got it like that. And get it off of all of it, you know. Make sure chicken breast is real good. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put that over there, but it's all good though. Cause you know it's always good in the hood, you know. So we work it out. We do it how we do it. We gonna be right back and it's gonna be all clean. So we got the chicken breast clean. <laughs> we back. <laughs> now, now we got to season the chicken breast. Now, I know some people out there going to get upset with me the way I season my food. But see, I want to taste the food just like everybody else want to taste the food, want to taste the seasoning. This is a big ass bowl we got right here. But you know, we, we just beginning. So, we ain't got those little small fancy bowls. You know how we do it in the hood. So, we might be mixing stuff up in the country crop bowl, but that's how we do it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gotta be all the, you know, you gotta have the, the right dishes and all of that. Just have the right food. Tastes good, okay? Now here we got a little Cajun seasoning. I'm gonna put some of that on the sprinkle somewhere. You know, you know, I'm gonna sprinkle some on it. You know, it ain't no little pinch. You know, we gonna sprinkle some. A little adobo. You know, how y'all know about adobo, abado, abobo, whatever, goya, oboya. This is my favorite right here, some crushed red peppers. Now, depending on how spicy you like your food, that's how you put your crushed red peppers on it. You know, I like I like a little kick to mine, so I'm like a little, sometimes a little heavy-handed with crushed red pepper. Then we're going to put some black pepper. Now you ain't got to put that much black pepper on there, especially if you put some of uh, the crushed red pepper. You want you don't want everything to blend. You don't want it to owe nothing to overdo nothing. You want everything that you bite into your food 
when you take one bite you want to taste some uh, red pepper then you'll taste some Cajun season a second later take a piece of little black pepper a little later you know that's how we do it you know what I'm saying and this right here I'm gonna add is some caraway and fennel seeds now I know a lot of y'all probably wondering what the hell is caraway and fennel seeds everybody in the hood got one of these seasoned racks Everybody in these season the racks is a few items that still in the rack never used. Look on your rack, you got some caraway and some fennel. Sprinkle a little bit on there. <laughs> I know you got one. I know you got some, okay? So then, uh oh, I'm trying to stab myself. So then, what you gonna do? You got your seasons all in there, you wanna mix it up good. Get your hands in it, get your hands in it. See, when you put your hands in it, that's like you're putting your love in it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's one of the main secret ingredients in cooking is love. If you don't cook with love, your food ain't gonna come out good. It may come out tasty, but it ain't gonna come out good. Like it's in the hood. <laughs> so look, so you got everything mixed up. Now you look at your chicken breast, you see that? You see seasons all over. That's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. You want you want to you want to cook food where when people taste your food, they want to eat all your food. You know, there ain't nothing like cooking a plate of food or cooking some food for somebody, and then after everybody leave and you go to empty the trash, the majority of the food is in the trash can. That's not a good look, no good feeling. So make sure you season your food. You don't have to use a whole lot of salt, but season this sort of stuff, you know. Wash your hands. Yep, I'm using dishwashing liquid to wash my hands. That's how we do it, ain't it? Know that, don't add. Okay, so now, while that season is sitting on the chicken, we're gonna take and we're gonna make the stuffing for the chicken. Now the stuffing, you can use, go to the, your, your neighborhood grocery store and get you some, uh, you know, like this stove top, stove top stuffing, some stuff like that. They have it right in the store. You get you a couple of bags of that. I had already preheated the water with a little bit of butter in it. You want to make it, you don't want to make it too soft. You want to make your stuffing a little thick, so you want to use less water because you want it to be thick because it's going to bake off in the oven. Now, you take yourself with my spoon there. All right, here we go. Now, mix that on up. Now, what I like to do, because, you know, although this can be some good stuffing and everything, I like to add a little spice to mine, a little uh, kick, you know, a little extra. So, I'll take me some chopped onions and I'll mix it in there with that as well. You don't gotta worry about so now you, you can sometimes you can saute your onions ahead of time and put them in there, but you don't have to. You're just trying to do it quick. Don't want to dirty up a whole lot of damn dishes. You can just go ahead and do it like that. Mix it up and see once it go in the oven. Once again, it's gonna bake some more. You know what I mean? So just mix that in there. And I also like to use a little uh, ground sage. I put that inside. Like I said, I add a little chopped onion to it and a little uh, ground sage in it just to get it a little extra flavor, okay? But see, all the flavor is in the chicken. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff the breast. Real simple procedure. Real simple procedure. Anybody can do it easily. Get you a pan. You got your stuffing right here. You got your chicken right there. Now, all you're going to do is take a chicken breast, put it in the palm of your hand. Once again, your hands is involved. 
That's the love. Don't be scared to touch it. Just make sure you clean them. As long as your hands clean, that's good. Put the chicken, put the stuffing in the middle, and you're just gonna wrap it like that. Wrap it like that. And just put it down, face down, in your pan. That's one breath. Let's get do it again. For those that can't get it on the first try, I'm gonna do it again. Wrap it, wrap it. See how easy that is? See how easy that is? For the ones that can't get it on the second try, I'ma do it on the third try. And it's up to you how much stuff you want in it, you know? It depends on the, the size of the breast and how much you want in there. So there we go. We got the stuffed chicken in the pan. I'm gonna just move this stuff out my way. Now, we got that there. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna do a gravy for it. But we, before we do the gravy, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and get this to start to working. Now what I like to do with mine, you know, I like to put a little water in the pan. This chicken gonna pretty much make it juice, but I like it to stay juicy. So I put a little water in my in my pan and that's all I don't put no oils or nothing like that. Just a little bit of water in it. Just to help keep it from sticking. And you wanna cover it. You wanna cover it and bake it. Don't talk no stuff because I forgot to get some foil. So I'm gonna have to bring it on up. Let's keep doing the hood. I'm quite sure somebody's gonna be ringing this up too. But it's coming. <laughs> Alrighty then. So now we're gonna work on the gravy. Now the cream of mushroom gravy, we can, um, let me, we'll get it in the trash in a minute, okay? The cream of mushroom gravy. You can just get you a can of cream of mushroom. But I'm doing, I'm putting a little vegetable oil in the pan. Now if you want to, um, you know, some of the health kick or whatever. Vegetable oil is not that bad. But you might want to go use olive oil. Olive oil is a little better. So with the, uh, I'm going to heat that up a little bit. And I got some sliced onions and some sliced mushrooms. Oh. So we got the uh, got the grease hot, the little vegetable oil. Oh shit, that's real hot. <laughs> Don't do that at home. You better ease, ease the mushrooms in there. Quick. Ease the mushrooms in there, ease the onions in there. <laughs> so what you want to do, you want to just saute this a little bit. You want to put enough grease in it that it ain't sticking, but not so much that it's popping all over the place. Some black pepper, sprinkle some black pepper on it. Some black pepper, a little more little Cajun seasoning. Like I say, you really don't want to overdo it because you got a lot of flavor that's gonna be in the chicken. So you won't want to overdo the gravy. You know what I'm saying? You want everything just to blend perfectly. Look at that. 
you don't want it, you don't want it. Your onions and your mushrooms cook down too far. Like that. Because you're going to add the cream of mushroom. Like I said, you can go, you can just get a can of cream of mushroom. And what you're going to do, you're going to take and you're going to pour the can of cream of mushroom soup right on into the same pan. Now, okay. And that just brings it down right there. You see how the tone changed? It's no longer fried. So you put that cream of mushroom, add it in, mix it in. already taste let that simmer by itself there then we're gonna add some potatoes some garlic potatoes to it as well well not to that sauce but to the menu all right you'll take to a pan another soft pan Oh shoot, it started on the first try. It normally don't start. Japan. Put a little grease in there to a little oil, vegetable oil. Like I say, once again, if you don't like the vegetable oil, you can use olive oil. It's not a problem. Then let that heat up a little bit over there. And we're gonna get that going. Okay, so with the corn potato, what we're gonna do, we're gonna chop up some parsley. Finally, now if you don't have fresh parsley, you can all you always use parsley flakes. But if you use parsley flakes, make sure you use a little more, you know, because the flavor won't be as strong as the fresh parsley, okay? Now you got your grease heating up over there for your potatoes. Once again, we working with a dull knife because we in the hood and we ain't got our budget together yet, so we gotta get some things sharpened. Okay, just take your parsley flakes. Put them in the grease. Along with some chopped onion. And chopped onion. Go on and take the pan that the, uh, the spoon you had in your gravy. Because you don't want to dirty up a whole lot of dishes. And mix it up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just do it how I do it. You know what I'm saying? And I just want you to fry. So then you're gonna take just some red paper back, cube them up. You're gonna just add the potatoes in there. Add the potatoes in there. You're gonna take some black pepper some crushed red pepper remember that's my favorite and it depends on how spicy you like it you know and we're gonna add some adobo I like cooking with adobo adobo got a real good flavor to it it got a real hood flavor to it. And some garlic salt. So then you're just gonna work the potatoes around. And let them cook. And get a little light brown. Pencil. Almost like fried potatoes. Home fried. Okay. So while that's doing that, we're gonna go ahead and do some green beans. Now, you can get some green beans, some fresh green beans if you want to. But baby, you can get you some canned green beans and go on and pop them on out. Now, once again, in the hood, be careful if you gotta do this. If 
So you got one of those can openers like me that might not open the can all the way. <laughs> Go to Old Faithful, pull out that knife. Let me clean this off before I get in there. Because I'm getting real hood now. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this gravy off. Now, ladies, they always say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So keep that in mind. Although I think this, but see, I feel the way to a man's heart is the one of these. <laughs> That'll get there quicker than that food will. <laughs> Just put you some green beans in the pan. cans where when you put the can open on it gave open right up back in the day. But these days everything's so messed up it's a recession. I don't know where they come in with the aluminum. You know what I'm saying? They making your cans out your other cans. Making your cans. Look at that. Don't that look delicious? That look absolutely delicious. That look absolutely delicious. Now you can, when you blend in the meal, you know, you got to know exactly how to see. If you notice, I've been cooking with a lot of spices. So you got your chicken, you know, it got a little kick to it, potatoes got a little kick to it. You know what I'm saying? You want your meal to blend. You don't want everything to have the same kick, okay? So what I'm gonna do with the green beans, that's where I'm gonna put my twist in it. The green beans, that's where you want your twist in. You know what, people always call it, cause see they know we was gonna be filming today. So that's the only reason this particular person keep calling this for. Look at I take this call for a second. Hello. The margarine and the green beans. A little brown sugar. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Margin. A little brown sugar. You'll be surprised what some of the uh what you may think is some of the weirdest stuff in the kitchen. That's one thing about cooking in the hood, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times. A lot of times you don't have everything that everybody have in your kitchen. You know what I'm saying? You don't have this and that. So you got to make do. That's why the hood food always good. Because we know how to take what's in the cabinet and make it happen. And that's all we're going to add to the green beans. We're going to let that cook. Let that cook. Okay, now we got our potatoes. You see it's getting a golden, golden color on it. Fry. So what you're gonna do is you just want that color. But you also want, you don't want no hard potatoes. You want some soft potatoes. So now that we got that on there, just gonna add some water. Now remember you got grease in it, in the pan. So be careful as you add your water into the pan, because you know grease and water will pop. So add you some water. Don't too much to see it go like that. Like that. After you do that, turn your pan down.
Cover it up. About 10 minutes, you're good to go. About five minutes on the green beans. Yeah. And the gravy already ready. Look at that. Already done, done. Already done, 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 done. Already done, done. Already done, 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 done. <laughs> Cause it's all good in the hood, baby. All right, so now the chicken has been cooking for 30 minutes on 350. I'm gonna pull it out. Take my ghetto wrap off of it. Excuse me, my hood wrap. to the side, get it on out the way. Now what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pull the chicken out. Yes. See, chicken breasts, it don't take that long to cook. Don't that look beautiful? So now what you're gonna do now, now that the chicken is cooked, you're gonna take your gravy. Your mushroom gravy that you would with your onion. You're gonna take that and you're just gonna top over the chicken. Evenly over the chicken. Evenly over the chicken. Evenly over the chicken. Evenly over the chicken. Yeah, when I say your family is going to love this one. That. You're gonna take it and you're gonna put it back in the oven. For an additional 10 minutes, uncovered. Back in there, uncovered. 10 minutes, and voila. And as you can see, the green beans, in that time, the green beans are cooked down with the butter and the brown sugar, and it got a nice little glaze on it. See how they glaze? And that only took about 10 minutes. And that's the Italian style green beans. Then over here, you have your potatoes. They done cooked down, you had the water, they done cooked down, then you got a nice soft brown garlic and parsley potato. This is nice and soft. Give me a grandma with the uh, can't find her teeth. You can chew those potatoes. You wanna make it a family show where all the family can eat. We don't just want the ones that got teeth to eat. Everybody need to be able to eat. Amen? Amen. So, you know, one of the things my mother always said to me, as you go. So, we gotta get this over there while we got the, we got 10 minutes to go, waiting for the, uh, the chicken in the oven. We're gonna get the dish water and stuff together. Alrighty. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's been 10 minutes. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Just look at that. That's what it's supposed to look like. Oh, I'm gonna bring that on up. And that's some stuff and chicken. Oh, it's delightful. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a plate of this together. So, once again, peoples, you got your stuffed chicken breast. You know, you wanna put you some of that gravy to go on top of it, some of the mushrooms.
baby. If this don't get, I don't know what will. Let me get you some of these potatoes. It's absolutely divine. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You already know. You about to eat this. Good as it is, I'm gonna use the same old spoon. All of these green beans. I told y'all we might get some biscuits. But we might. We did. Now, if you wanna be a little fancy, even if you're at home, you know, clean your edges. And with that uh, parsley, and you ain't gonna use it all. You can go on and add your little garnish. Add your little garnish. Make it real pretty for the family. Bon appetit. And that's a little. Now, since we're in the hood. You know, it's always one of them hood niggas around somewhere. Yo, Tree! Come here. Come and taste this for me. God, Put your hands at you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just keep it by that it's always good in the hood. Until next time, keep it good, baby. And remember that secret ingredient, love. You got to put that love in it. You don't put that love in your food, your food ain't going to be good. I'm going to holler.